Alright, so once you have your materials, you're going to need something to cover your journal, so I've chosen some fabric. You're going to need a piece of paper for the inside accordion. You're going to need some cardboard. I just rummaged around through my recycling and picked something up. It just helps, you know, so you don't have to go out and buy any extra materials. A ruler, some scissors, and a pencil. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take our paper and prep our paper for the size that we would like. paper is to take your fingernail and run it right along the crease or if you got short fingernails you could also use a straight edge or something stiffer with a ruler or even the side of a pencil as well just make sure that your lead doesn't draw on the paper you might need to do that back and forth that way when I trim this paper off it'll be nice and crisp and straight and very gently. Some people also will lick their finger or dip it in water and wet that crease. And that will ensure a crisper tear. Still, it can be difficult. But I find that I, uh, with my abilities, am able to get a nicer, cleaner edge this way, rather than cutting along a fold. There. Now, ideally, I would like a longer piece of paper so that I can have a longer accordion. But, this will give you the idea of how to make an accordion book. And this way I'm using some paper up and I'm using some cardboard up that I have. Rather than going out and buying any new materials, I'm going to create something with what I've got. A little bit more sustainable that way. Now I need to make start to make the cover for my book. So I need to make sure that the, the, uh, the cover is the same side as the pages. So the cover is what the cardboard is going to be made out of. So this is almost the same size. This will be great. So I'm going to cut two pieces of cardboard that are the same size as my pages, but it looks like I'm going to have to trim my pages down a bit. Not a problem. So I'm actually going to use the creases that are already available in my cardboard. So I'm going to line that up nice and neat. Then I'm going to take my ruler and use this as a guide to draw where I need to cut for my pages. And your pencil? Perfect. Take your scissors and cut off the extra. Pages are ready. Now let's get our cover ready. So I'm going to line this up once again just to double check on all the creases. It looks good. I'm going to take my ruler, line that up at the edge of my pages on this side, take my pencil, and draw that line again. Awesome. I'm going to do that again over here. Looks like I messed up when I detached this box from itself, so I'm going to use this side. And again, this was just cardboard that I pulled out of my recycling. So it's really great to be able to use items that were going to be recycled or trashed anyway. Now I just get to cut out the covers of my book. Another way that you could do this, as I'm doing this, I think of this, is if you have an X-Acto blade or a, a straight blade, um, you are able to actually use those to cut these a little bit easier with a cutting mat. So let me show you. Bring in my cutting mat. If you don't have a cutting mat, that's all right. What you can also use is even another piece of cardboard. I would suggest something that's a lot thicker, the corrugated kind, in case you cut through your top layer of cardboard you're using for your cover and the bottom one so you don't uh, ruin your tabletop surface. So I've actually grabbed a, uh, a sewing ruler because it's plastic and when you run the blade along it uh, as a straight edge it will it, it's not going to cut the, 
the plastic itself, the ruler. But if I run it along the metal side of my ruler that I have, it's going to end up dulling my blade. But if I run it along the wooden side as well, it's going to end up cutting my ruler. So, take care of your materials so that they last longer. I have my two covers, I have my pages. Now before I glue these together, I'm going to put the outside on my cardboard. So that would be, what I'm using is fabric. You could also use wrapping paper, you could take another piece of paper and you could draw your own design on it or paint your own design on it, you could print on it, you could even print an image out from your computer, you could collage a whole bunch of stuff together. The possibilities are, well, endless, whatever you can imagine, but I'm going to use some fabric. You want to make sure you have a little bit of extra on each edge because what we're going to end up doing is actually folding this over and gluing it down. Now usually I would use scissors, but since this is fabric, I'm actually going to use my rotary cutter because it's a lot easier to cut my fabric on a nice straight line. So here's another tip for if you do have a cutting mat like this one. Go ahead and use the grid that's on here as a guide. Um, I've just lined up the edge of my fabric with those lines. It's a little, it's not quite square, but that's all right. So that way, when I go ahead to go cut this, I can actually use my ruler and line it up with the markings on my grid, on my mat, so that I can get it on the same up here as the same down here. So it looks like I'm at about a quarter inch. Yep. Adjust that and take your rotary cutter. And this fabric was already scrapped from another project that I had done, a tote bag that I had sewn. So I've saved it. Instead of going out and buying new stuff for this project, I'm able to reuse what I had. All right, now the next step is to put our cover, or sorry, our fabric on top of our actual cover. Now for this you're gonna need some glue. You might wanna use hot glue or tacky glue. So what I've actually found is some premium craft glue and fabric glue, so we're gonna try that. Well, it looks like it's been a while since I've used this, so I can't actually open the top, but that doesn't mean that I still can't use it. So, I can't open this top, however. So I'm gonna set this top aside, and I grabbed a Q-tip, and I'm gonna use a Q-tip. Now, the Q-tips that I buy um, are, they're not plastic, they're actually cardboard in the center, they're paper. So it's a little bit more sustainable than buying plastic ones. Of course, what you also could do too is take the scrap paper that's already gonna go in the recycling, and use that as well to dip into here and uh, brush onto your surface. Now what I also am going to do is actually I'm going to cut these corners a little bit because it's going to help the fabric stay on here a little bit better. So I'm simply going to... And this is why you have fabric only scissors because once you cut them on paper they start to dull the edges. So I'm going to grab my fabric scissors. And fabric only because if you have other people in the house, you want to make sure that they understand this as well. Not that this is going to stop them from using it on paper, but it could try to help. And sometimes I forget, so this is a good reminder. So now, glue, Q-tip, and go ahead and spread that along the edge. I'm going to do one edge at a time, and I'm actually going to use a piece of this paper. To set that down on. There we go. There. Now that one side's secure. I'm going to deal with my scissors that aren't for fabric and cut off these little tabs. They're just going to get in the way. There. Now I'm going to actually go from the opposite side so that I can pull this kind of tight before I glue it down. It's almost as if like you're stretching a canvas if you've ever done that before. You want to go from the opposites. So I'm going to pull that nice and tight. 
All right, pull that tight again a little bit. Not too tight because you don't want the cardboard to bow. Cut off the little extras of the fabric again. And we're ready to do the other sides. So again, if you've stretched a canvas before, this is pretty similar. And that you're not going to start pulling from the corner. Pull from the center of it, okay? And don't pull too hard yet because the other side's not tacked down. And if you're using a Q-tip, um, another trick to get it off the Q-tip is kind of to twist the Q-tip as you are pushing it along your cardboard. All right, center, pull just a tiny bit and press down. And then pull just a tiny bit and press down. Now this glue seems to be holding pretty well, but sometimes if you're going to use like an Elmer's glue, just a regular school glue, it might not be quite as strong and you might have to hold it there a little while before until it dries a little and sticks. Same thing on the other side. Alright, again I'm pulling just a little bit, but not too much to make the cardboard bow and buckle. Awesome. So I'm going to put this aside and let it dry and do my other one. There, now that I have both of my sides of covers done, I'm going to go wash my hands and wash the glue off of them so the glue doesn't get on anything else. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, why did you wash your hands if the next step is to glue the pages in? Well, I get enough glue on my hands that I think it's just easier to start with a clean slate sometimes. So, these have dried a little bit. Time to add in our pages. Now you don't need a ton. I got a little bit too much on that corner because I don't want my paper to wrinkle when I put it on there so I had to spread it out just a little bit. you really want to make sure your fingers are clean of glue and anything else so that when you rub this down you're not getting any marks or glue smudges on your new journal page. And there I would take it one extra step and press them down together and there you have it you have your accordion book. So three pages in my opinion might be a little small but like I said, I was using what I had and still kind of make something kind of neat. So this might be interesting to have set up and you can have two pages open and then you can open it the other way and have other two other pages open. So there's plenty of other different variations you can do with this. You could paint on top of this fabric, you could sew something else on top of this fabric. You could even make a quilted cover which might be kind of neat. So other things to think about too, if you have the fabric around, is try to think of where, like if I was using this again, where are these flowers going to be placed on my cover? Maybe I want to make sure it's placed right at the top right here, or maybe I like it how it's in this corner. But try to be purposeful with what you've got, alright? Alright, stay tuned, make sure to subscribe for some more tutorials.